Hello, welcome to part two of the lesson on acceleration. I'm assuming you've seen and understood part one, so we can take it from there. In this second part, we're going to be focusing on this equation, what it means, and we're going to do some problem solving. We'll do five examples. All the problems are basically one-dimensional ones. That means we're looking at motion along a line, maybe left, right, up or down. To get the most out of this, you really ought to do the problems as we work through yourself before I give you the answers. So if you want to get a pen and paper, calculator maybe, but the numbers are simple, pause the video to get those now. Let's make a start. Look at the equation on the bottom. That's what we're focusing on. We've seen it in part one. Let's go over the symbols. U is initial velocity. That's the velocity we start with, meters per second. The value of V is the final velocity, the velocity we finish with, meters per second. A is the acceleration, meters per second squared. And T is time taken for the velocity to change from the initial to the final value. As we saw in part one, the change in velocity is the final value minus the initial value. V minus U gives you the change in velocity. If we divide that by time, we get acceleration. And I've done that in the formula, but you'll note I've left the underlining out. To keep it neater, we'll not bother putting the underlines in most of the time. Just a quick reminder, the magnitude of acceleration is simply the magnitude of V minus U, the change in velocity divided by the time. And the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the velocity change. It's the direction of V minus U. Let's do some problem solving. First one. A stone is thrown upwards at a speed of 10 meters per second. It comes down and falls into a well. Let's show that with a simple diagram. Thrown upwards at 10 meters per second, reaches the top, comes down, but it falls down a well. Five sef seconds after it was thrown, it is going downwards at a speed of 39 meters per second, and it's inside the well now. And you're being asked to find the acceleration. So, you should pause the video and try working that one out for yourself. I hope you've had a go. Let's go through the answer. It often helps to put the values that we know down. U, initial velocity, is 10 meters per second. V, final velocity, well it's 39 meters, meters per second, but it's downwards, so we use minus 39 meters per second as the value of V. And the time tells us 5 seconds. Put the numbers in the formula, V minus U over T, minus 39, minus 10, over 5, gives minus 49 over 5. And you don't need the calculator for that. If you double the top, it's 98. If you double the bottom, it's 10. So it's 98 over 10, which is 9.8. That's minus 9.8 meters per second squared. You may recognize that value. Let's do another question. Here's our basic equation for acceleration. We need to be able to rearrange it. Can you come up with three new equations? One with V as the subject, one with U as the subject, and one with T as the subject. Pause the video, try that. Well, I hope you've had a go. The first step would be to multiply both sides of the equation by T. Multiply the left side by T gives us AT. Multiply the right side by T, the T's cancel top and bottom, leaves V minus U then it's fairly easy to get V. Just add U to both sides, we get V is U plus AT. V is U plus AT. And that's a format you'll often see in a formula sheet or data booklet if you're studying for an exam. You may see the top form, but often they put V equals U plus AT. 
if we want to get u we can rearrange this equation take at from both sides so that means we've got v minus at on the left and u by itself on the right so u is v minus at to get time go back to the top equation divide both sides by a divide the left side by a leaves t by itself divide the right side by a you get v minus u over a so that's the equation for the time let's do another problem let's say a car accelerates for five seconds at two meters per second squared it's then traveling at 50 meters per second what was its initial velocity pause try it for yourself let's go through it we can put the values down if we want if it helps us the time is five seconds tells us in the question you've got to learn to read the question and extract the information acceleration two meters per second squared v the final velocity we're told is 50 meters per second we're not told the direction so we've just got to assume all these are positive directions what's the initial velocity u well let's put our basic equation down I'll use that one because that's the one as I say often given in a data sheet rearrange it to give you u u is v minus at put the numbers in 50 minus acceleration times time 2 times 5 that's 50 minus 10 which is 40 meters per second and of course don't forget the unit question 4 how long will it take for a rocket to reach 1% of the speed of light symbol C if the rocket's acceleration is 1.0 meters per second squared and it starts from rest there's a value of C the speed of light pause the video and try it well I hope you've done that let's work out 1% of the speed of light first of all 1% means a hundredth and of course you know that if you divide 10 to the 8 by 100 it's 10 to the 6 so 1% of the speed of light is 3 million 3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second let's just use our basic equation t will be v minus u over a v is final velocity 3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second minus u u is 0 because we're told it starts from rest that means the initial velocity was 0 and we divide v minus u by the acceleration which is 1.0 meters per second squared and it gives us 3 times 10 to the 6 3 million seconds if we divide that by 3600 we get hours and if we divide it again by 24 we get days and it turns out to be about 35 days so that's what you'd have to do to get to 1% of the speed of light of course if you wanted to do this it would be a very major problem technically because you'd have to have enough fuel to fire rockets continuously for 35 days a huge mass of fuel let's do the last question here's a graph now it's a velocity time graph we'll be talking about these in another lesson but it's a graph showing you how the velocity changes over time hope it makes sense you start with a velocity of 20 meters per second a positive velocity and the velocity gradually gets less and for a moment the velocity is zero and then the velocity increases in the negative direction eventually you end up at minus 30 meters per second two questions find uh, describe the motion that's difficult because you've got to write some words down physics students often find this quite hard to put things into words so a bit of practice is a good idea describe the motion that means the way it moves and then part B is a very easy one find the acceleration from the graph pause and have a go let's go through these for 5a there's no one correct answer so here's one possible answer could say the object has an initial speed of 20 meters per second in the positive direction that gives you your starting point it steadily decelerates it slows down you can see that till it stops 
at that point it's stationary it should probably say momentarily stops or has an instantaneous velocity of zero because it doesn't stay stopped then it steadily increases speed in the opposite direction which you can see here until it reaches 30 meters per second and that's in the opposite direction to the way it started that's one way to say it there are many ways to explain what's happened how the object has moved 5b is pretty straightforward the acceleration is v minus u over t let's use the data on the graph what is v well go to the end of the line minus 30 meters per second so we put minus 30 in for v what was u it was plus 20 so we say minus plus 20 minus 20 and we've got to divide that by the time which you can read off the graph and that gives us minus 50 over 10 which is of course minus 5 meters per second squared that's all I hope you feel a bit more confident about using acceleration in calculations thank you for watching